onto the campaign trail, Vice President Kamala Harris has been losing ground with black male voters. And in an effort to rally their support back, the vice president sat down for an interview with the radio host Charlemagne and suggested that she is open to reparations. My question to you is, what's your stance on reparations? We all know that America became great, you know, off the backs of free black labor. Um, how progressive are you on making it a priority and righting America's wrongs? It's understood that you are running for president for all people of America. Mm -hmm. Asking for specifics for black communities doesn't mean no, don't do for others. But black Americans mm -hmm. are heavily asked to vote Democrat in every election for over half a, a century with very little in return. What are your plans to address these very important issues and change that narrative? To your point, um, yes, I am running to be a president for all Americans. That being said, I do have clear eyes about the disparities that exist and the context in which they exist, meaning history, to your point. So my agenda, well, first of all, on the point of reparations, I, it has to be studied. So this sounds a lot different than what she said in 2019, and I want to play that. It's important to recognize this contrast, so watch. Should black people get reparations? I think there has to be some form of reparations, and we can discuss what that is. Hmm, quite different, and notably, Julie, the Washington Post had a poll that showed 70 percent of Americans are against this. Okay, I have clear eyes too when wearing contact lenses, as she just <laughs> mentioned. So I'm glad her eyesight's great. But um, in hindsight, if you look at former President Obama coming out and basically calling out adult black men for getting behind Kamala Harris just because they're black. There's no other reason. I have clear eyes. The reason why she's saying all of this and also calling for reparations and also telling the black community, oh, and by the way, if I legalize marijuana nationally, your whole community is going to benefit. What kind of BS is that? And she's basically doing this because she's losing the black vote. I mean, she still is ahead of Trump on the black vote, but historically speaking, the Republicans have never been this strong when it comes to the minority vote. And that's what they're afraid of because they're way too comfortable in states like Pennsylvania, for example, where she's bombing, quite frankly. They're so comfortable on getting the blue collar vote, the minority vote, specifically the, the black and the Hispanic vote. Well, guess what? It's not working anymore because it hasn't worked for four years. Hispanics are sick and tired, legal Hispanics, of the illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. and, and the black and minority communities are also sick and tired of not being able to put food on their tables. So that's not working anymore. And pandering to the black community, quite frankly, I believe is insulting. Yeah, and Charlemagne did ask about the failure at the border from the Biden-Harris administration. Take a listen. But doesn't the Biden administration have to take some blame for the border, though? A lot of the blame? Because, I mean, the first three years, y'all did get a lot of things wrong with the border. No, Charlemagne, within hours of being inaugurated, the first bill we passed before we did the Inflation Reduction Act, before we did the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, before we did the, the, the Safer Communities Act to deal with gun violence, first thing we dropped was a bill to fix the broken immigration system, which, by the way, Trump did not fix when he was president. All right, so let's talk about that bill that dropped in January when they first took over. Here's the fact sheet from that bill. You can still find this on the White House website. You can see President Biden is sending a bill to Congress on day one to restore humanity and American values to our immigration system. The bill provides hardworking people who enrich our communities every day and who have lived here for years, in some cases decade, an opportunity to earn citizenship. Molly, the bill did have minimal investments in border technology, but the premise of the bill was legalizing immigrants. Yeah. So one of the answers, this is a consistent answer from Democrats sort of across the board when they get asked about the border as an issue broadly. They point back to a bill and then they blame the other side for not advancing this bill or doing this thing or the other thing. And a lot of people say, well, look, there are other things that also could have happened. So going back to a bill that never passed doesn't seem to you know, give a broader answer to Americans. That's part of the reason I think it was smart for her to go on with Charlemagne the God because she does need to get into these nooks and crannies and some of the voters that she's lost over the years. There's the gender gap, the enormous gender gap. Black women say they support her. 70% of black men said the same, and then it's even a lesser degree. This is the New York Times Siena poll. 25% of young black men say they support Trump in November. So I think it was smart for her to go on to, to have some of these answers, but 
this particular answer that's been sort of a mantra doesn't seem to advance any ground. So another mantra we hear all the time, Paul, is I was a prosecutor and I prosecuted the gangs and the cartels. Well, here's a fact check from none other than CNN on that very point. Watch this. One of Harris's first major controversies happened just months after she was elected San Francisco district attorney. In 2004, police officer Isaac Espinoza was gunned down by a gang member. There you go. Just 29, he was a young father and devoted husband to Renata Espinoza, who had to identify his body in the hospital. I remember I walk into this room and he still had blood here. He was laying there with his eyes closed and I saw the blood here. And I walked over to him and I was just like, wake up. Harris publicly announced she would not seek the death penalty against Espinoza's killer. The killer was a gang member. No death penalty. That's the kind of prosecution work she did. Yeah, and when she was AG, let's look at a couple of things that she did. First of all, she wrote the ballot measure, the uh, the line literally on the ballot for Proposition 47, I think it was, that essentially dumbed down the criminal justice system mm -hmm. in California. They're still living with that. And in fact, they're about to vote on it and undo it. I'd love to see her get that question now to see how, you know, do you support now the fact that they're going to undo one of your signature things? Secondly, she also presided over, as the AG, top prosecutor in California, the disbanding of the California Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement, which was essentially a mini DEA that existed in California. All those agents were looking to it. This doesn't get a lot of media. All the agents in that were looking for, hey, save us here. We need you. And this is when the opioid thing is going on. No, she lets it expire. All right. Then you have things like that. Then she's the border czar, which is an enforcement role. She doesn't go to the border to find out. Now, their claim is, oh, you were never border czar. You were root cause czar. Okay, as root cause czar, did you go once at all to do the border, talk to a border patrol agent and say, what is the root cause? Why are they coming here? Who are these people? Are any of them gang members? You got any sources in the prisons that are taking, in the holding cells that are telling you who's being trafficked? Who are all these little kids that are unaccompanied? And where are they going once they get in? We know where they're going. A lot of them are being human trafficking. I could go on and on about this. Speaking of the border, I border on speechless when they say we're the ones who were good on the border and the Republicans were not. Donald Trump stopped this border nonsense. As soon as he came in, they undid it. You know, all of that is, is absolutely correct. And I'm curious from you, Kennedy, does the Charlemagne interview break through? He has a huge audience, millions of listeners. Does it change anything? No, it doesn't change anything. He's interviewed her in the past. And, you know, he pressed her where um, the members of the black community have the most issue, and that's with competing for jobs in big cities. And, and that's something that he's been very outspoken about. And this is actually a, a layup for her. This, is, this would be a great way for her to differentiate herself from President Biden while telling the truth at the same time, because people can see and feel the effects of the immigration and border failure. And so what he's asking her is a little bit of accountability to say, yeah, you know, we tried and it didn't work, but she has to lie about it. And people know what the numbers are. I mean, and that's one thing where it's not theoretical. Like there are actually fewer border crossings under President Trump than there are in the three years of this administration. So that is one area where she could say, yeah, we didn't do enough. We didn't do it right. And we can do better. And she is incapable mm -hmm. of doing that. The thing that I do like about Charlemagne is at least he's trying to get at the truth. And he is trying to find common ground with people that he disagrees with. I've seen that firsthand with him. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.